So today I have a very different top five for you. I've got my Les Paul fuzz face wah wah Marshall at the ready. And if you remember last week we got all funky and I was looking at my favorite Nile Rogers riffs. This week it's all about raw and primitive rock and roll from Mr. Ron Ashton. Each one of these riffs is pretty easy to play and each one of them is a real classic. So I hope this is gonna be a fun video. So Ron Ashton, the original Stooges guitar player, in my opinion, one of the greatest rock and roll proto-punk guitar players of all time. And I've been meaning to look at some of his stuff in one of my videos for a while, just not got round to it. I have in fact looked at two or three tracks from the Raw Power album before, but on that record, lead guitar was in fact played by James Williamson and Ashton was actually relegated to playing bass on that record which I don't think he was too happy about at the time. Anyway without any further ado let's take a look at the first riff. <laughs> So the first of five really great riffs this one and as I said most of these are pretty easy to play and I think the most important thing here is just to get the right kind of attitude and I think it's in the spirit of Ron Ashton to be a little bit messy and to play with a little bit of abandon rather than get too precise on these things and I don't think I'm playing these riffs exactly like he does it I'm trying to get fairly close but it's more about the spirit and the attitude than being precise here I think. So let's get into the riff itself then and I'm going to try and move fairly quickly here as most of these riffs are pretty simple but if I do go too fast for you then you might like to check out my tab where you can look at all the little details. So this one is played in the fifth position it's A minor pentatonic based and the, the essence of it I think is this little melody which goes like this. <laughs> from G to A, that's the 5th and 7th frets on the D string. We've got the C note here at the 5th fret. We've got a little bit of a bend at the 7th fret on the G string. And then C, A, C. And then it goes round again. riff really comes to life when you add in the open A string and that's kind of droning away throughout this riff particularly when you're playing the notes on the D string you're going to want to let that open A string ring out as well so that sounds like this we've got so don't need to be too precise here he's playing it slightly differently each time in terms of the strings that he's striking but that's the basic idea. <laughs> So this one is based on a simple power chord shape, an A5 in the 5th position. So we've got the 5th fret on the low E and then the 7th fret on the A and the D strings. There's an A power chord and we're going between this A power chord and just a simple bar at the 5th fret across the lowest 
three strings. So we're kind of putting these two fingers down and then lifting them up again. So that's the way I'm fingering it. You could just flatten down your third finger and play both of those notes with that finger if you wanted to. And the idea is this, we're starting off with the power chord, playing that twice, then lifting up to the straight bar and then putting those fingers back down again. That's the basic idea. Sometimes there's an extra lift in there so it sounds like this. And then one further thing you can do is just sometimes add in a quick down up with your strumming hand. Mostly this is played with down strokes. But then you can add in this quick down up which sounds like this. just a question of moving that riff to a couple of different places so we can move across to the next string set and you've got the riff based off of a D power chord or you can move down to the open position and base it off of an E power chord so that's the basic idea So at the very top of the song there's this wah-wah part which is really nice and it's just based on two chord shapes. We've just got the 5th fret on the DGB and then the 7th fret on the DGB. And it's going back and forth between those two shapes. And then you're kind of wahing in time to that so that sounds like this. Then the main riff itself is based off of an A power chord and uh, actually very similar to the no fun riff. We've got the power chord and then we're lifting up fingers three and four just to the straight bar at the fifth fret. So we've got this kind of thing. And it's okay I think if you let some of the higher strings ring through as well if you're just barring all the way across and occasionally you're hearing some of the other notes in there. Uh, important thing here I think is the rhythm. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Uh, 
So that's the basic riff. Then for the chorus of the song, if you want to call it that, it's just a pair of power chords. I think Ashton turns on the fuzz and we've got an A power chord going down two frets to a G. So we have this. So another fantastic riff and I'm not sure I'm playing this one exactly like Ashton does it. It's quite hard on the recording to hear exactly what notes he's playing. It's very muted and percussive but this is my best guess and uh, my take on this particular riff. It's all played down in the open position and based off of a simple E power chord. So we just got low E string and then this B note here and we're going between that power chord lifting up the first finger and we've got the two open low strings in that kind of rhythm the cool thing about this is that mostly you're not playing on beat one and you're coming in on the and of ones it's two and three and four and one So we've got that series of muted strums and then I'm playing the open A and D and then the E power chord and for that you're just releasing the, the palm mute. So that's the basic riff and every other time what I'm doing is I'm moving over to an A power chord so we have this. power chord twice and then back to the open A and D and the E power chord. And one other thing you can hear is just occasionally he's doing a little fill which is just a bend at the second fret on the G string so we have this. And if I turn up, this is what it sounds like.
could I do a Ron Ashton lesson without looking at this particular riff? It's just such a perfect riff, so brilliant, so simple. And I actually think it's one of the very first things I learned on the guitar. I think it was this along with You Really Got Me by The Kinks. And it's still one of my favorite riffs to play. It's all just based on power chords with a fifth string root. So we're starting up at the 10th fret. We've got, in terms of fret numbers, it's just 10, 12, 12, this is a G5. Moving that down one fret and then moving it down two frets. So. And what makes the riff is that we've got the open low E string droning throughout most of the song. And we're playing this all with down strokes, but occasionally we're just throwing in a quick down up, particularly just before a chord change, I think. So you have. And then the little bridge section is very similar, just moving this power chord shape around, so. talk you through the gear that I'm using today and I did try and do a little bit of research about Ron Ashton's gear and in particular the gear that he would have used for the first two Stooges records and there's a lot of information out there but I couldn't get a definitive answer as to what gear he's using on those records. I think it's likely that for the first record he was using a Gibson Flying V through Marshall Amps. Then for Funhouse uh, I'm not exactly sure I couldn't find any definite information at all and as far as pedals go he's obviously using a fuzz and a wah-wah pedal of some kind so again it seems likely he used a fuzz face on that first record and then he seems to have used a, a vox wah-wah but I'm not certain about that. So for this video I'm just having fun using the gear that I've got to hand to try and get reasonably close to the Ashton sound I'm not claiming to be able to reproduce his tones exactly so the guitar I'm using is a Les Paul and I actually think if you're after the Ashton sound the guitar is not actually the most important factor and when you look at the guitars that he used live used all kinds of different guitars always sounded like himself so whatever guitar you've got to hand you should be able to make do with that I think uh, more important is the amp and the pedals so obviously you need a, a loud amp so a Marshall style amp will be good and then the two pedals you hear on these records, a fuzz pedal of some kind and a wah-wah pedal. So the specific pedals I'm using today, I'm using a fuzz face, which is a Jimi Hendrix series silicon fuzz face. I've got a crybaby wah, and my amp is this Marshall. Now this Marshall is actually quite a recent acquisition. It's one of the Marshall Studio series. This particular one is a Studio Vintage amp, which is inspired by the classic Marshall Plexi amps and I actually used to have a full size Marshall half stack but I ended up selling it just because it was a completely impractical amp. It was far too big and heavy to use for the kind of gigs that I was playing at the time and it was much too loud for home use so I ended up getting rid of that but I was missing that Marshall sound so I ended up buying one of these and it seems like a really good solution because it's got a lot of the character of the bigger amps that it's inspired by but you can achieve those sounds at a much more reasonable volume and it's still a loud amp but uh, nowhere near as loud as a, a proper Marshall Plexi. So there we are as usual music tab is going to be up on my Patreon page and if you want more Stooges then do check out my James Williamson lessons I think I've looked at Gimme Danger, Penetration and Seek and Destroy, Search and Destroy. Seek and Destroy is a Metallica song I think but anyway check out those if you're interested thanks for watching I shall see you next time bye